Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. So today I'll be presenting our masterclass on reporting basics. Um, I'm a senior account manager here at Counter. Uh, I've worked alongside our product teams, our insights teams, our support teams have uh, seen our product and what we do and what we offer from a few different angles on our side. And I've worked hand in hand with a lot of our customers implementing the solutions that we have. So being able to pass on that feedback to our, into our product team, into our QA teams. So always had hands on on both sides. And I'm really happy to talk to you today about Counter Insights. So why now? Well, we think it is more important than ever, ever before, to start looking at your reports on a weekly basis. And we're going to go through and explain why that is. We are also going to give you, within this reporting basics, a consistent approach, how often you should be looking at this and what elements you should be looking into. And we're also going to then round up at the end, just giving you a bit of a glimpse of what is available beyond Insights Lite, but we really want to stress the importance that we, we want to create value in Insights Lite, which is absolutely no cost to any counter pos user and want to help you start taking any action on your data as soon as possible. We're going to go for about 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, so the, the content and the slides we have usually goes for about 15 minutes or so. And we'll have some time for some questions if there's some things we want to go over. So first off, we really want to acknowledge that it's really hard. And we know um, it's it's a tough industry. Uh, there's more competition than ever. Your rent is is always chasing you there. You've got, you know, some venues, you know, not lasting as long. And we really feel it's, you know, incredibly important. We'd want to do everything we can as part of what we offer our counter to make it part of a workflow, easy to do, to keep track of the things you need to know. The problem is, and that we see a lot of venues doing, is they usually wait till the end of the month to start digging into reports, start pulling data, to start finding out why something wasn't working or why something was working both very important and that's a really common pitfall for that we see very often um, we're going to give you a, an easy to use approach and be able to start reporting on things in smaller time frames so we we definitely see that moving towards a week as opposed to a month alone is going to make it easier to connect with your chef and they're going to better understand, you know, what dishes are selling well, which ones aren't and be better prepared in the right time of the day and understand how they can more efficiently use their resources, the food and their resources in the team uh, and make it available. Also with your team, if something's working really well, you want to connect with them in days, not weeks, and be able to reward great behaviors and also look for those habits which aren't helping as much to be able to solve problems sooner. If you're looking at solving problems a month later, it's really hard to know what to do. So we want to help you get started today to start taking action in days, not weeks. So this approach, we find that the best place to start if you're not already looking at your reports or you're not sure uh, an easy way to consistently approach things uh, on a regular basis, uh, we want you to, we want to help you log in each week. Uh, the, the week that part of the week that was will be available in Insights Lite, which is insights.counter.com. We're going to help you better understand your revenue. We're going to help you better understand your products. We're going to better understand people in our business and as our payments. These are the four key areas you're going to look at once a week at minimum. So let's kick off on revenue. So the things that we want to better understand and be able to see from Insights Lite dashboard is you're going to better understand your total revenue, your total sales, your average transaction values, uh, how much you're spending on purchases, your average transaction value per day of the week, um, and also your sales by hour of the day. So we've packaged a lot of really important information in quite an easy to read and easy to approach space. 
So here we can see, you can see our top line. So if this was a real, if this was the cafe we're using, so this is our, our counter cafe, which we, we put some test data through. Uh, so 25, 559, 33. So you just want to see where that sits. Um, that's probably a figure you're really quite aware of. Most people watch their top, top line quite regularly. You can easily see uh, your total amount of sales. So it's good to be able to see if that's growing or uh, if that's like, going less, uh, but also your average transaction value. So for this venue right here, for uh, the counter cafe, we've got 966. We, for an average transaction value, we've also spent a bit over or almost $1,200 on purchases. That's a little bit low. So that's telling me straight away that I know that I'm going to be receiving some purchases and some payments are going to be going out this week. Uh, but I can also see just an easy to read snapshot there that I can see how my average transaction value for every day is comparing to the yearly average and how things are trending. So I can see that Sunday was great. It was a good almost 8.5% up, but the other days weren't as good. Thursday was just a slight dip, uh, but Monday looks like it was a bit of a, a lower day, but maybe that's something that I'm already aware of, but maybe I would like to look at ways I can start focusing on Monday's average transaction value and finding ways to improve that. Seeing these things from a day-to-day -day basis and knowing when you have certain team members on and what your resources are helps you better understand how to utilize them and what numbers to push aside from just the top line. We just want to find the things that you can more tangibly talk to your team about. We can also see a breakdown by sales by hour of the day. So if we're looking at the whole of last week, this will be every five o'clock hour, every six o'clock hour, all seen from one point of view. So we can see how hours are performing over the week. We can see the total transactions in that hour and we can see the total X tax that, uh, you know, was accumulated. Um, Laura mentioned that she wants to better understand wage for wages for sales. While we don't have, I know you said you were using deputy, we don't have that data coming into counter insights just yet, but by using uh, integration like deputy, uh, you can definitely easily get a hold of the data that you're seeing what you're spending per hour. And here on counter insights light, you can easily see what you're making by hour. So if this was my venue, I'd see that, you know, that post two o'clock really starts to taper off. Do my rosters match? Do I have uh, less people on at four o'clock? Are my most expensive resources? Uh, are they winding down in the day? Or maybe I want to take a different approach and I really want to just look at how I can boost that later part in the day. How can I maybe use the prices feature to automatically change the prices of certain items or automatic promotions to be able to easily upsell items to my customers. So we've had a, a good snapshot there of how our revenue is going for the week and different ways we can really tangibly attack the average transaction value, which affects the top line. Uh, but now we actually want to see the products that my customers are buying and that my team are talking to my customers about. I'll be able to see the top selling POS categories and how they're being utilized. And we're just going to see a breakdown of reporting groups. And I'm going to go over why we have a difference between those two. We're also going to take a look at most improving products, the ones with the biggest difference from the week before. And we're also going to look at our top selling products. So here we see side by side, we see our top performing categories on the left hand side and the total revenue obtained from them. So we're actually looking at a different venue. So this is more of like the counter sandwich shop, which also sells um, a lot of like retail goods and also like cafe retail goods. So if you like filters and um, like uh, puck presses and things like that. So just to have things that, you know, from the people more, more into their coffee. And we can see that our regular categories, which our team very, you know, comfortably go to quite often. They're probably at the top of our layout and counter pause. Those are regular contributors. We, we know those are doing well and just want to make sure those are on track. And if there are dips there or increases, we dig into why that may be and what we can improve. But we really want to start taking a look at those things in the middle, but also those things down the bottom. And I can see that maybe my team isn't popping into that retail category as often and also like the drinks in the menu. So maybe I would like to talk to the team and say like, how can we make more team members, maybe new team members aware and feel comfortable about the products that we sell? 
when someone's ordering a single O espresso and you can tell they really like their coffee, you know, do you have a, a mock mask at home? Do you need new filters? Just something that, you know, just can help, it, it, you know, connect your team to the products you have and better offer them to your customers. We've also got on the right reporting groups. Now, if you haven't seen reporting groups before, if when you go into Counter Insights Lite, it just says none. Uh, reporting groups is new to Counter, or we introduced it at the same time when we implemented Insights. And it's a way you can now easily split between easily categorizing your items, your products in the pods. So it has the layout that suits you best and your team. That's on the left there. But your reporting groups, you can put into whichever reporting groups you want. And the beautiful thing about this is they can be reassigned. So here I've got my coffee, my food, my bakery pastry, my bakery bread, my beverages. There's my retail items. I can see there's a few items there which are in no reporting group. So maybe those are just like some modifiers which I don't need to affect the, the data as much, but I can always reassign those. So at a starting point, lots of venues like to have a F and B split or food and beverage split. And we see a lot of venues move to maybe three. So you have your food and beverage and then your high GP items. So all your sides, all your upsells and putting into categories so you can track week on week, just finding those brief conversations that contribute a lot to an average transaction value and just make that meal a bit more complete for your customers. You can, you can set up as many reporting groups as you want, uh, but you can only assign one at a time to a product, but it can always be reassigned. And what we're going to do, we're going to send you a, uh, a bit of a pack after this. So if you haven't get started with Count Insights as yet, you're going to be easily be able to start using Insights Lite and you can easily start assigning re reporting groups to your products and easily be able to see the previous week how things are looking from a more reporting point of view. And you can then also see on the left your pause categories, how your team uses counter as a tool point of view and balance those side by side. If we move now to our top performing products, we can see that the espresso last week had a huge jump. We went from six to 20. So what we're actually looking at is to break it down in the darker green, we're looking at the week before last, and in the week um, that we're looking at insights, we're looking at the week that was. So last week, light green, two weeks ago, dark green. And we see that we went from six to 20. So I want to say like, what was happening last week that was different to the week before? Did we have a new single oil in the past? Which barista was on? Who dialed in the coffee? Because a lot of customers really like that. And when you see these improvements, this is where you want to say, you know what, I want to find ways to make that my new standard. If I sold six espressos one week and 20, I want to start selling 15 espressos and find out what my customers really liked about it or what's changing that you know, I can help my customers start looking more towards those products. Uh, we can also start to see, uh, I can see the add cheese. So I can see that's a uh, a modifier that was used a lot and that had a very big increase. So that tells me the conversations and the competition I had with my team to look at adding cheese onto sandwiches, onto more items and incentivizing upsells and just offering customers those little bit extras is definitely working. I can see that's a big jump there and I want to keep an eye on that just to make sure that also can become more of like my, my new normal, my new standard. Uh, can I just start to see things which may not be uh, like an ongoing trend, but just something you want to see in a bit of a shift you Can see the mushy and egg and the chili chicken, uh, maybe moving to warmer season. So I can see customers are starting to go for those heartier, warmer meals as it's starting to get a bit cooler. It's getting a bit warm in Sydney, but already today feels a bit cooler under 20 degrees. So everyone's, everyone started to put their jumpers on really quickly and everyone's starting to, to tuck into like the, the more, the, the warmer meals. Uh, can also see on the far right, we can see here a breakdown between our top selling products right next to each other. We'll be able to see the revenue they contribute to, but also the total quantity they sold. So you can see that, like, especially if you look at the flat white medium, I can see that it didn't contribute a lot or didn't contribute as much as others, so about halfway there at a bit over a thousand dollars, but it was by far the, the most popular product. So knowing what's popular and also what's also just going to be my mainstay with my customers, maybe not making me the 
the most revenue is actually just one of the favorites. And I just want to make sure that that is staying that way. And, you know, people feel comfortable ordering these products all the time. Now we're going to start looking at what we always feel is the most important aspect of any, any business, uh, any, any great venue is the people. So we're going to look at two sides. We're going to look at your staff and your customers. We're going to look at your top, top selling staff and your top customers by how much they spend with you. And this is if you have them as a customer in counter and tracking, uh, adding them to a sale with their profile. So here I can see a breakdown of the team on the left. Again, just like products, it's being very consistent in the way we're showing the information. So instead of looking at a product's cont contribution to revenue and an, um, a total, we actually look at a, a team member's contribution to revenue and their average transaction value. So we're talking about that at the start, how it looked for your whole venue over the week, and now we can look at your team member over the week. So what jumps out to me, I can see here, and Julie may not be contributing the most revenue last week, but her average transaction value is the highest. We've still got a staff one there. I left that in as an example because uh, we have a lot of, lot of venues using Counter who just have like a manager login and a staff login. What happens if you just have everyone on the staff, you're just going to have all the information packaged in one place doesn't give you much to action or take, uh, you know, find positive change in. So when you have lots of different team members uh, easily switching between their different profiles and serving customers, you can start seeing individual performance. And Angelie's doing a great job. She's probably not contributing as much to revenue as some of the other people because she's probably part-time, maybe working at uni, um, but her average transaction is, is really high. So I'm going to keep a really close eye on what she's doing really great what upsell she's doing, how she's communicating with customers, and just try and find those behaviors, which is leading to such a great result there, and then helping find it easier for more team members to get their average transaction value up, but not feel like they're overselling their customers, just feel really natural and just contributing more and more to my top line in a, in a nice organic way. On the right-hand side, I can see my top customers that my regulars coming in. Mark came in only twice last week, but he spent over 60 bucks. So definitely, definitely thank Mark when he comes in. Definitely, you know, flash him a smile and say, hey, maybe give him a, you know, a free coffee. Just make him feel very comfortable and welcome coming in because he definitely feels very comfortable coming into my venue and spending a lot with me. And I, and I definitely don't want to change that. So in the last part, we're going to be looking at payments and we want to start looking at what uh, amounts have been contributed by different payment types, uh, a breakdown over the week, and also how my payments are trending over a longer period of time so you can get a, a broader snapshot. So here, again, a lot of information packaged in a nice condensed space. So the top left uh, I've got here a breakdown, I can see my Tyro, which is my integrated payments. If you're not already using integrated payments with Counter, we've got a few offerings. So definitely reach out to us so we can help you do that. Uh, we can see cash. Those two are by far my biggest contributors. I can see how much they've in, in rev they've given me, but also a, a percentage breakdown. So 71 to 26 and the rest are making up uh, the rest of the group there. But there's things I want to keep a close eye on. I have been noticing that less people are paying with cash and more people are paying with Tyro. Um, I can also see that by having integrated payments and being able to take payments to the table, it's easier to turn tables faster. So it's helping me, you know, get more orders through and also have customers waiting less time. Um, so I started to think about what is the cost of having cash in my business and cashing up at the end of each day and the security and everything involved with that and taking money to the bank and how can I see those things shifting and how can I make it easier to offer other options to my customers? One of the growing options that I have here, I've started taking app ordering. Um, I've you know connected with Counter to look at what offerings are available. I've got Hey You and we've got other approaches we can do, but if I get more customers ordering the way they want, paying the way they want. Maybe let's order ahead. Maybe it's like paying via an app at the table. Uh, maybe it's tied into a loyalty program. If I can give them another option and a different way to pay and it's helping me better connect with them and understanding who my customers are, I want to see how that's developing. I want to see that 
grow with my business because we definitely see giving customers more options, especially in the payment space is a great way to, to, you know, better connect with your customers and they appreciate it. And we've always, and we've seen a lot of opinions had a lot of great response for that. We can also see down the bottom here, how things are trending over time. So I can see here, um, Steady increase in Tyro and a slight decrease over cash over time. So it was in the high 60s and now it's edging towards the mid 70s. And I'm going to keep an eye on that in the next couple of weeks and say, you know what, is that something that's happening more and more? Should I be looking at, you know, how many payment terminals I have? Should I be looking at the rate I'm paying? Should I be paying more attention and allowing more customers? Maybe if I have like a, a $10 minimum, maybe I want to reassess that because if my customers want to do that and it's helping me, you know, turn tables fast and offer better experiences, how can I do that in a more efficient way, which is better for my business as well. So now we're going to move on to a, a bit of a glimpse of what is beyond light. But before we do that, I really want to stress that everything we've looked at so far is completely free to every counter customer. All you have to do is go to insights.counter.com or if you're in the reporting section, select insights at the top towards the right. Um, you'll easily be able to log in on a Monday and see the week that was, and I'll show you a week starter. You'll easily be able to start taking a look at your revenue, your products, your people, and your payments. If you don't really have a workflow and don't already have an approach, this is the best place to start. Log in once a week, look at your four most crucial parts of your business and start taking notes and what changes you want to see and how you're going to affect change there. You log in the next week and see how things have moved around. It's the best place to start week on week, looking at the four crucial areas and better connecting with your team about it. But for those who are already looking at the reports and already want to find out more, we just want to give you a bit of an idea if you haven't seen it already, what is possible with beyond light on view and share as our starting points. So on our dashboards, you have drill downs. So what we're looking at here is one of the, the 30 plus dashboards available on insights view and share. I'm looking at a reporting group overview. So I can see my part of this dashboard shows me how my reporting groups are uh, performing next to each other. And I looking at now I can see in the top left, it's the past seven complete days and I can click on food. And then I can select individual reporting groups. I can dive into yet another dashboard, which is going to give me information only on that reporting group. It's going to give me my top selling products and how that reporting group is performing over the hour. We've also got the filtering, which I mentioned up there. We said past seven complete days. It doesn't have to be past seven complete days or just the week that was. It can be past day. It can be past five days, it can be the past quarter, can be a much wider and you've got there in the past, but there's a lot of filters there in a certain date range and there's a lot of different options how you can filter your information. So when you're looking at a date filter here, lots of the information can be filtered in lots of different ways. So we have filters built into the dashboards just to make it easier to approach your data and start asking good questions either by drill down or either by using a filter, very often both. The last thing we're going to look at here, this is available on the share plan. And this gives you the ability to more easily share this information with your team. So you can have a running schedule. You go into a dashboard and say, you know what? I need to see this information weekly on a Tuesday at 8 a.m. I want to know about the, the Bondi site and I want to see the last week starter. And I want to look at the reporting group coffee. I can set that and that's going to run. So your filters become part of your schedules as well. And your information and your data and your reports are going to be waiting for you in your inbox rather than you going in each week. So we don't want to disincentivize coming into counter insights and interacting with your data. That's always going to be beneficial. But if there's certain things you want to look at every week, um, this is the place we can start getting that specific information. So we've seen a lot of customers start off weekly looking at revenue products, people and payments, and then have more questions off the bat and say, you know what, I've looked at my products every week, but now I need to start looking at my reporting groups and the report individual reporting group performance of key products. How is my coffee? How is my menu performing? How is breakfast performing Gates lunch? How can I better understand that? That's rounding off the everything we want to cover. And again, just want to stress that 
there's so much available in Counter Insights Lite on the free plan to see the week that was and the four key areas of your business. If you haven't already started a workflow, please start looking at your data on a weekly basis. It's, it's the best place to start to better connect with your customers, better connect with the team, and better understand uh, the needs and the, the peaks and the valleys of, of the business and start taking action in days, not weeks. So what I'd like to do, I'm just gonna turn my camera on just to say hey to everyone again. And I've got the chat window open. So before we round up, I just wanna see if anyone has any questions that have come up. If we can't answer them now, I'm happy to round back later. Uh, if you have team members you wanna be able to see uh, who were showing this webinar, we are gonna be sending the recording out later. Uh, we're also gonna send a whole lot of guides. So if you don't have reporting groups, we're gonna give you the guide on how to create and assign reporting groups. You can start seeing that information and insights. Um, we're gonna start giving you different ways to approach your data and good questions to be asking your business. So I'll hang around for a little while and just to see if any questions come through. Uh, while we're waiting, I just wanna thank everyone for taking time out of your day. I really do appreciate it. We're gonna have more and more webinars coming soon. Uh, we will be communicating and making them more easily available uh, at a later date. But right now, we just wanna make sure the content we have and the, answer, the questions we're putting forward and the answers we have is just really what our customers you know, need to hear. So there's more and more to come and we're looking forward to, to connecting with you on, on more masterclasses. I can't see any questions that have come through just yet, so I'll give it, oh, there. Laura, it's my pleasure. Thanks, thanks for taking time. Oh, and we've got a question coming through. to pull up the reports. So if you haven't already started using Counter Insights, so I'm just on a, a presentation here. So when you go to my.counter.com, there's two ways that you can get to Insights. You can either go to My Counter and you'll have the four parts of the product that we have, some of them available today, some of them coming soon. You look for Insights and you click Launch Insights. If it's the first time, it may ask you to choose a plan and you're gonna have Light, uh, View, Share and Build. If you just want to choose the light option, it will take you straight to the light dashboard. Okay, let's jump back to staff performance. So this is just one view of ways you can look at staff performance. There's a lot more available in view and share, but we think this top selling staff is, is a great starting point. So what we've got here, we've got all our team members who've made sales in the previous week and we can see their total revenue and then their average transaction value. It's ordered from top to bottom, uh, from uh, total sales, uh, sorry, from the total, from highest to lowest, but then we can also see that the average transaction value right next to it. So you wanna take both those into account, not just who's contributing the most, but who's contributing the most in the moment. Uh, Paula, I hope that answered your question. Does anyone else have any any uh, questions, any of the dashboards uh, like to go over? If not, it's totally cool. We, we're gonna send the email out, uh, which is better. So it's, it's really hard to say which is better. You wanna keep a close eye on both. Someone who's full-time and working more often is gonna be able to contribute more to revenue, uh, but someone who has like a, on average a high transaction value is, is, is ultimately better. So we always put both here because we can see in line our full-time next to our part-time and our casuals. Uh, we wanna be able to understand, you know, who's contributing the moment, but also who's contributing overall. So if someone's, you know, it's, it's unlikely someone have a, a high total if they have a low average transaction value, but we didn't want to just, just show the totals. We think that average transaction values week on week, if that's dropping, that's something that's going to be easier to take an action on. You can see the, they're not vastly different. The, the top being close to $20, the bottom being close to $15, but those small changes in behavior, having helps someone move an average transaction value, help find a, an easy way to upsell, offering more options to your customers, contributes a lot to the business. Is there something comparable hours to sales? 
So what we looked at the start, we can see our total number of uh, transactions and also our uh, total rev for that hour. Um, so that's like the number of sales and, and the value they, they brought over hours over the day. And this is showing us all each hour on top of each other for the past week. On staff, not on the light dashboard, but we do have a lot more information available in Insights View and Share. Uh, but we just felt that this was the best starting point to be able to offer everyone um, at, at no cost. But we also have a, a booking link, so feel free to book in some time, uh, Paula, and I'm happy to just go through and give you a better idea of when it comes to staff performance, what kind of uh, capabilities and possibilities we have with, with Insights. Yeah, so Insights Lite is completely free to all counter customers. So you would go, uh, if you haven't used it already, it's gonna first ask you which plan you want, choose the Lite plan, and you can start looking at this exact dashboard that we have here and start looking at these four key areas of business. It'll always show you the previous week and you can start looking at how things happened or what, what happened the week before and start taking action. So it, it's, not, it's a, not so much a demo, but um, a focus on last week and the, the four crucial areas, but there's no cost whatsoever. We want to help customers find value in these parts and then start moving forward with Count Insights. So it looks like the questions may have come to an end. So thank you so much for the questions. Oh, reports are coming up. It tells me I'm on the demo. Uh, do I want to upgrade? Uh, don't upgrade just yet. You should have an option to choose light and that's going to take you to this dashboard. So if you want to upgrade and go beyond light, you can, but we're really recommending that you start with this workflow and then be able to start moving forward. If you've already started, if you've already upgraded, definitely start using your filters, definitely start using your schedules if you want to share to better communi communicate this information with your teams. And if you need some guides on that, if you want to have a chat to someone, feel free to book in uh, once we send that the webinar recording with the guides, but also a booking link. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm probably going to have to uh, round up. Everyone who's registered will get sent an email. So not only the people who attended, um, but feel free to forward this onto your team. We'll be sending it as soon as we can, hopefully later today, possibly tomorrow morning. We just want to make sure we've got all the information that we need in there. And I uh, just want to thanks, thank everyone again for taking time out of the day and uh, talking about reporting basics. Hope you have a lovely day and hope you have a very busy and very good weekend. See you later.